Welcome back, guys, to another edition of OT with Nast and Riggs and our boy Baller, who's joining us again this week. Thank you, Baller. You're the man. Uh, big news this morning. Um, you hate to see anyone lose their job, but the Flyers have fired Elaine Vigneault and Michelle Terrian. Boys, uh, what are your thoughts here? I think something that needed to happen, obviously. I mean, you lose you lose eight straight and uh, things aren't getting any better. You got you to gotta fire somebody, and it's usually the coach, assistant coach, uh, and a lot of times general manager like we've seen with Canucks. But uh, um, you got you to gotta shake things up. That's what happens. Yeah, I, it, I, you, you always hate. I've been through it. Uh, you hate to see. They're human beings at the end of the day, but it is their job. They make a lot of money. Yep. You hate to Business. see. It's a business. You hate to see people lose their job. Um, but this has been a bit of a yeah. mess. Yeah. I mean, to put it, you know, in a nice way. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, it's been a mess baller. Yeah, I mean, it had to happen. It yep. was time. Yep. Uh, to be honest, I kind of thought it should have happened at the end of last season. I've been yeah, right. I've been calling for Rick Tockett for a while. I mean, we could get on that in a little bit. One of the uh, possible candidates, but. It had to happen. You lose eight in a row, second to worst in the division. I mean, you needed to make change. Yeah. Yep. You could wonder why Chuck's still here. We can yep. get into that a little bit too. I mean, not good in Flyers land right now. Yeah, I know for no. sure. Yeah, I think, you know, when, when shit hits the fan uh, in any sport, again, it's all about performance and winning games. You yeah, know? it and, is. And it's the, the easiest move you can make is to fire, well, starting with the coach. Yeah. And then general manager too. Usually, it's uh, you know they're 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 connected, right? They're one builds a team, and no one is 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 running the team um, on a day to day. But um, um, I, I don't know how you fix this. You know, this, this will shake things up. Whoever they bring in, there's a couple of good candidates. You mentioned Rick Tockett. I think uh, John Tortorella is another yeah, one there. Towards. I mean, I think both are amazing options. But whoever yeah. comes in, you know, is going to put their fingerprint on this, and, and at the very least, get these guys working. In a, in a little bit more of a united fashion. I think, right. I think, you know, they're missing some bodies. You can argue that that's why they might be losing some of these games. But I mean, my baller and I were at the game yesterday and, and, and it, and it just, I mean, they, they, they got sh shots, but there was no essence, you know, there's like, you know, that, that fire, that yeah. desire, that team chemistry, whatever you want to call it. Um, so hopefully one of these coaches, if it's even them, it comes in and, and, and at least at the very least gets these guys working together. Right. right? And then, it, and then the, the fans can't be that disappointed at the end of the day. Right. Exactly. And, and Riggs, you, you, you played the game obviously at the highest level and it is, you feel frustrated for the boys because you see the frustration. Yeah. And I think we touched on this last week. It's not because they're not trying. No. You get to a point sometimes where I think you try too hard. And you're not think you're just like, I'm going to go help here when maybe, you know, there was a play the other day we talked about where one of the D had had a player and the other D just went flying over to him when you have to trust your D partner. 100%. Uh, but things like that start happen, happening when things are going bad. Yeah, and they're and I, going bad. And we had, we talked about this too, guys. We had a 10-game losing streak a few years ago when I was with a team. And the difference, I feel like, and that was the games were closer, and we just couldn't get a bounce. There were overtime losses. These have not been close. Yeah. And you see the frustration building, and Baller, you brought it up. I was not at the game. You guys were. Um, they came out strong. Uh, I, I did watch afterwards, but they came out, had a good start to the game. Yeah. But you give one up, and it's almost like, oh, fuck, here we go again. You know, and, and That's exactly and, what I thought. And it's it sucks as a player, Riles. You you could touch on that way better than we can. But even as a staff member, your job as a staff member, as a trainer, as an equipment guy, which you know all those guys do, you have to stay positive because you. Last thing the players, Riles, you know this about me. I'm just hyper anyway. But like you, <laughs> you have to be. Hey, we've lost seven in a row, but hey, you know it's okay, boys. We're gonna get it tonight, and I'm sure that's going on by the staff. Uh, but even as a staff member, when this is going like this and they get that goal, then you're like, oh man, yeah. you know, and you see, you see heads go down yeah. and it's, yeah. it's just a tough time. Deflating man. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And then to piggyback off your point there, you know, I, um, you know, everyone's working hard, right? I mean, you know, he like said, no one's, no one's not working, but I think what I'm seeing, and this happens when, when you're squeezing the stick too much, you start doing other people's jobs. You know what I mean? So yes. it's like not working smart anymore, right? I mean, you're putting the physical work in and, and the effort in, but like, 
you know, like to, to, to that point on, on that goal, it's like maybe just stay with your man and, you know, less actual, less work, a little bit more thinking right. and then everything would have sorted itself out. Once you start doing other people's jobs, that really, you know, destroys the chemistry. That's why there's a philosophy around how to play the game is that everyone kind of knows their job and where to be in certain situations. And once you start deviating away from that, that's when the, the team play, you know, lands up, uh, self-destructing and, right. I, and you're seeing that it's like there's the flyers are finding ways to get shots but you look at you know specifically yesterday's game um the tampa is just crisper they just break the puck yeah. out better and they just enter the zone <laughs> way more efficiently you know what i mean and they, yeah. just, they just look better um so um you know going back to you know you can only do so much with the product on the ice i mean are the flyers good enough as a team to actually even with the coaching change yeah, make a run for the playoffs. Like I, I, I don't know. Even if they were fully healthy right now, I just don't see them being as good as some of these higher tier teams. You know, I mean, I, I mean, they got some good players, right? But to me, like you know, you go down like the depth of like the third and fourth line uh, compared to other teams. Like they got some higher end skill guys on these. Yeah, on the on like the, you uh, look at what Tampa did to us last night without Kucherov, Point, and Cernak. Right. I mean, we got Molly Wop seven to one. Yeah. They're missing guys. They're not using that as ex- an excuse. You look at uh, Washington. They're without Oshi. They're without Baxter, Mantha. They're yeah, that's true. I forgot. Yeah, I, Osh has, has Baxter played? No, I mean he hasn't even played. Yeah, he's a huge part of their team. Yeah, oh, like yeah. a huge part. Pittsburgh was at Pittsburgh was without Sid and Gino for a while. Gino's still out. Right, they're still above water. They're they're finding ways, and the Flyers aren't doing that right yeah, now. Yeah, and that comes with the depth. I mean, if Pat Maroon's first shift of the game, you get you get a partial breakaway. Yeah, you know what I mean. He, he's not the quickest footed guy, but Big like, Rig will tell you. He, he he goes, I'm not bad. Actually, when we had dinner, I I said, you're still scooting out there. He goes, well. Once I get going, yeah. I'm good. But if I gotta stop, I might. You might as well. <laughs> yeah. I might as well change. You know, yeah, like we were yeah. fucking dying. But. I actually thought he was moving pretty good. But I, like, but that's I did my, too. But my point was just like you know, like they're finding ways to generate opportunities outside of like their you know their yeah. their, their elite go to players, and and that's what good teams do. Yeah. And that's the only way to sustain a, a 82 game season. But I, I, on paper, going into the season, we talked about this several I, times. That's what like, I was going to say. Yeah, even if they were fully healthy right now. I just they they'll probably squeeze out a few more wins, but I don't see them being no. in that that higher tiered bracket of, of well, elite teams. Right, but I, like I was, th- I, we were positive going into this. Um, I did think this was going to be better because, you know, everybody's talking about you lose Jake. I, I still don't like that, but the fact is Jake wanted out. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah, and there's sure. reasons behind and that, which mentally, uh, people disconnected, you don't gotta, really you bring on. up, which yeah. surprises me. Yeah, but he wanted out. Why do you want to leave this organization? I, I don't know, but I uh, do know. But <laughs> maybe he wants to come back now. <laughs> yeah, maybe he does. But uh, <laughs> but the fact is, you know, you, you pick up Cam and he's struggling now. You know, he started off great. The guy can score, but like again, he goes back to everybody just trying yeah, almost the missing almost the net too. too yeah, too just. That and and but we had, I think we talked about we thought well th- this team is kind of deep it's it's we have a little bit of depth here you know because I was very optimistic I'm not saying I thought they were the best team in the league but I thought the changes were going to be really good but yeah. right now for some reason they're not uh, just well, performing I, those new pieces I which, think it's interesting look at what Jake's doing in Columbus look at what Ghost is doing in Arizona yeah I know right. They just got rid Cube, of Cubes. Cube, yeah. He's got more points five on five than anyone on the Flyers does besides G since he's left. Players are leaving Philly and having success. Having success, right. I mean, yeah. 100%. something's up there. Something's definitely up. Whether they're playing in situations that they shouldn't be in or the, the, the coach themselves doesn't have enough confidence in them and putting them in a situation to be successful. Whatever that lands up being, obviously they're finding success elsewhere. So their, their coach is believing in them a little bit more or putting them in situations to be uh, more highly successful. And, um, and, and, you know, uh, Mike Yo is taking over as in- interim head coach. Yeah, we should mention that. And then uh, Michelle Terrien's also out. We didn't mention that. Yep. French Mike's out. French Mike. <laughs> but uh, we mentioned the two top names coming up, uh, you know, as far as taking over the, the head coaching job, potentially, yeah. are uh, Rick Tockett and, um, and uh, John Tortorella. What, I mean, if we were just talking about those two, wh- right. wh- who do you like are those two? I, you know what? Um Forge, I like I'm lucky enough to know both guys. I think they approach the game different, but their passion's the same. Yeah. And talk is a 
really good players coach. He's kind of like Chief. Mm -hmm. He'll get on you. He he's into the game. Like that's the thing. He's a competitor. Torch is a little louder, as we've heard, like right. from people that have played for him that have been on the show, and I've been fortunate enough to work with him at the Olympics and World Cup. He just wants to win. I mean, that's yeah. the thing. He's he's boisterous. He's loud on the bench. He tells you as soon as you get on the bench if you did something wrong. Yeah. But he does make a difference. I think. I mean, I think they're both great candidates. I don't know which way they'll go. Maybe they don't. Maybe Yosi steps in here and they win some games. Just because of the change, you know right, how that yeah, works sometimes. Yeah, a little chemistry. You, I mean, you never know voice. what they're going to do. I'm sure they're talking and looking. Oh, yeah. I would imagine they are. I would think so. But, um, I don't you know, know if you guys heard on TNT the other night, they showed the Flyers Rangers highlights Wednesday night, and they're starting, to, they were starting to mess with talk. Uh, Anson, oh. Anson oh, yeah. Carter was like, uh, is, your, is your phone ringing yet? Anyone calling you? <laughs> and Liam McHugh's like, oh, if, if, if they call you, we've got to break some news here. They were busting his balls <laughs> oh, about that's it. That's awesome. That's funny. Yeah, well, they're yeah, they're both amazing candidates. I mean, I don't think you can go wrong uh, with, with, with either. either. Um, you know, uh, Baller and I were talking before about um, you know, Tockett never really had a good team that he was coaching. No. You know what I mean? You look back at in Tampa it was before the rebuild, right? Uh, Phoenix um, suspect team, so he never really had a a real true um, you know group of guys to work with. Torts, I mean, he had some pretty good teams there yeah. for a few years. Um, but you said that the mindsets are similar. They're obviously different characters, but they're both good humans. What really we've learned. Yeah. I've never actually met towards. And they care about they their care, players. They want to win, obviously. I think every coach wants to win. Um, you know, for me, love them both. I think in the situation the Flyers are in, I just, just knowing how Torts has been known to shake teams up, especially when he comes in early. Mm -hmm. Not yep. that talk couldn't do this. Chiefs right. done this back in the day. Yeah, yeah. Get them working, get them skating. Um, I just think like to, to send a message, to rattle the cage a little bit. I mean, to me, Torts might might be that guy. Right. I don't know, but right. <laughs> well, it might not even be either of those guys. You it might not. Like, yeah, you know I mean, it, Mike Yo was yep. a head coach. Yeah, uh, he has some success, and maybe they don't even find anybody. But um, something needs to change. You need some sort of uh, shake up. Right, and and you know, just to touch on that, Riles with about uh, talk. The teams he had weren't that good, but. The last few years he coached here, they were right there. Yeah, they were. They yeah. were right there, and, and to me, that says a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't have a ton of talent there. No, that, but but they were in the mix. Yeah, they, they were, exactly, you know, yeah. went down to Still the last couple them. days of the season, games of the season. And to me, when you got a guy like that, your players are playing that hard for you, and you know, I don't know Talk's exact system because we didn't get, I didn't get to see yeah. a lot of Arizona games, but I know how much players cared about him and yeah. loved him, and vice versa. That's impressive to me, but Torch will come in, and <laughs> yeah. crack the whip, oh, yeah. and not to talk Wooden like you yeah. said, but well, talk knows the organization, he knows the city, he knows what it takes to succeed in Philadelphia. Yeah. I think that's got to count for something. Hundred percent, and he lived it and played it, right? Yeah. I mean, it wasn't yeah. just like some sort of just like prima donna goal scorer. Like this guy like embodied he what did. it he was, was like to he be was in a Philly. flyer, like yeah, a typical flyer. flyer. If Mr. Snyder was still here. Talk would talk be would be yeah. the guy, hundred yep. percent. Yeah, it's, that is the truth. That's the other thing is it's not the same anymore. Yeah. No, you know, the and I'm not saying not that in a negative way, but it's not the same. No, of course not. And I saw that firsthand, and you yeah. kind of see it even from the outside if you. Oh, you go to a game. You go to a game. You go to a game, and yeah, the like, spirit's not was there. Was it like half empty last night? I heard it was. No, oh, it was bad. It was bad. Yeah. And yeah, there's the just whole the third period was nothing but booze. Oh yeah, the whole third period. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I just, I sound soft, but I just feel bad for the boys because I know how much. Of course, no I know how to go frustrated through that. they are, yeah. man. It's, it's, it's a shame. But it's become just so corporate that you know, I just, it's just lost that at essence. And obviously, Ed Snyder built an amazing organization around. You know, I, mean, and it, I, call, I built a culture, not just it, an organization. It was. It was. You know, I think it's it, lost. It was an that. environment that you just. Even if you had a bad year there, like it was just different. Yeah. I don't know how to explain it. It was just a it was you felt a like winning at least environment. Someone cared is what yeah, you felt yeah, like. Exactly. Kind of going back to what you said about corporate. We went to the link the other night. When we were driving there, I noticed two big billboards. They're selling Santa sacks. They're not advertising the star young goalie. They're not advertising, you yeah. know, Claude Giroux, who's second all time in points. They're advertising gritty. 
Yeah, I know. I, I know. mean, it's pathetic. That, yeah, that is a huge disconnect. You know, yeah. what you're trying to bring people into the building for. Yep. Is it just entertainment? You may, you may as well move the team to another Vegas or something like that, or somewhere where the fans are just coming there for some sort of entertainment. Yeah. Um, but if you know, you talk about an actual hockey city where the where the fans actually care about the product on the ice, like. You, it's the only way to bring in legitimate fans. Otherwise, yeah. you're just bringing people in just to spend, a, you know, a couple hundred bucks to come see a uh, a nice jumbotron right. and a nice presentation and, yeah. and whatever else, and then and then uh, and, and then they're booing the product on the ice. But, yeah, last yeah. night was uh, shore night, and they got gritty running around in a bathing suit. Like embarrassing. No one over, no, no one over the age of ten finds that funny entertaining no it was it was actually well especially relentlessly when you annoying seven in a row. yeah i mean you yeah. know it's different when your things are going well and but you're right it's uh and going back more on corporate i mean av was just fired a half hour ago i'm sitting here wondering why is chuck still here yeah. chuck, chuck last week he says it's a personnel problem you know he wants to see av coach this team when they're healthy well what changed within the last week i mean they lost two games right but yeah yeah, I and mean, then he he blamed a lot of it on personnel. I mean, that's your that's your job, Chuck. I mean, well, exactly. I mean, especially early on in the season like this, if you if you know a couple guys going to be out for longer periods of time, like you, you, maybe you try and find a way to patch a hole or yeah. two, right? I mean, it's like there it has to be some effort besides just playing it patient because you play this game a little bit more patient, too much more patiently, you, you're going to be out. You're going to be out and, and, and have no chance of getting the playoffs. Yeah. So then the whole other season's written off completely. Yep. I mean, there has to be some sort of effort. And it's like, how much longer could you wait for, for to fire the coach? I mean, it's, you know, it, yeah. it could have happened last week, arguably. I mean, they're just trying to hold on for dear life. But I agree and go back to my comment earlier. I mean, I thought going into this season, if they were fully healthy, that they would have been like right up there with the, you know some of the elite ah, teams. I agree. I still, now I just, like after seeing some of these elite teams play, I mean, even fully healthy, I'm not sure they're they're, yeah, I mean, they're, they're with them with you know up there with them. Um, there's just so many guys struggling. It's like it's the whole team. Like, is that is is a new coach going to help all of that? I think just over 26 years of, of being in the room. Obviously, we know I didn't play, but being around it and even being at the rink longer than you guys were, and hearing and watching and listening. Um, Riles knows usually I don't care if they put me behind the bench it's something different yeah, yeah. and it just always seems to work like that first game I'm not the saying it's going to go 10 games, in a row yeah. but I think they win tonight yeah. and I know I'm you know because of that change you know I think the guy you're going to see every which it's not like they don't give everything that they have every night like yeah. but Hopefully Yossi gets a win, you know, for his sake and the team's sake and the fans' sake, and then maybe it turns into something. Yeah. But you're still looking at weeks without Ellie, without Ellis. Yeah. Um, you know, Brass, I don't know how much closer he is. It sounded like he tweaked his injury at practice. Oh, yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. Beezer. Um, week to week, yeah. Yeah, but. Beezer's two to four. He was, I mean, like, the only one scoring goals. Yeah. Well, and we talked about this, Riles. I don't know if we talked about it on the show, but – I was saying about Beezer, like, he was squeezing the stick. I, I think I said to you, it's just going to take him to do have a good game, have a good play, and he's going to get his mojo back, and he did. And then he loses an edge, goes yeah. into the boards. Yeah. Look, the way he hit into those boards, it looked like his shoulder ended up over here. I mean, he totally – it didn't look good. And I, I, I did uh, speak with him, and he said, not too bad, not going to need surgery, which is good. But, you know, two to four weeks, who knows? What you know? Hopefully, he. The last thing you do is rush another guy back. Right, exactly. Especially him. This kid's a special player. Yeah. Um. Would it help if they had everybody? Yes, but like you said, baller. Everybody doesn't have all their guys all the time, and yeah. you have to find a way. And you know what? The players haven't made excuses about that. We saw G say it's not an excuse. Yeah. You know. And and and, and building off that is 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 that the Flyers are not just losing; they're they're losing by a country mile. You know, a lot of these games, like yeah. it's not, they're not even close. It'd be different if these are one goal games and all overtime games. Then you could be like, okay, well, we actually are competitive in these games right. with a, without some of these guys. I, I think that wait, wait and see. We, we are what we are right now. Comment could be justified, mm -hmm. but we're not. They're not even close. Like yeah. to me, they're 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 just outworked and 
and outcompeted it by, by a country mile. Um, so b- that being said, just like what Canucks did, you fire the coach and general manager. It, it, it's 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 kind of like f- some some new life on the other side of the fence. You know yeah. what I mean? And it's a, a new philosophy of building a team and putting a thing a, a team together. So I mean, that's just my opinion. I, I you know you, you don't ever want to call for people's heads no, and no, say, no. oh yeah, fire. It's easy to say just fire somebody, fire some, get rid of somebody. You know what I mean? But like. You know, you're in the business of winning games and, and an organization building a culture or recreating a culture, and that hasn't happened in three years. I mean, it's the same. It's the same story. Yeah, it's the same conversations that we have like every every time. It's like, is this going to get better? No, it's not getting any better. It's not getting any better. Well, it's like, I mean, sometimes you just got to make those tough moves. You know what I mean? But yeah. like, that's the business we're in, right? I mean, yeah. well, that's that's the business that these hockey guys are in, right? I mean, it's 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 about winning games and. Um, on the ride home last night, I started thinking about, remember 13-14, they fired Lavi three games in? Mm-hmm. And then they still struggled for a little bit after that, but then... We won the first game, and then, that's what I mean, we won that first yeah. game, like 2-1. Because I remember Chief, someone asked about, what are you going to do about Rose Hill? He took a bad penalty late in the game, yeah. and we had to kill a penalty off. And Chief goes, what, what do you mean to do, spank him? Yeah, I remember like, that. Yeah. He knows he made a dumb play. Yeah, it's a course. terrible play. What, what am I going to do at that point? I can't bench him. Here's <laughs> three minutes to go in the game. But we won that game, struggled, but found a way. And, and there's another yeah, thing that, there. Chief found a way with, with a, a, re- team a limited w- group. A limited group. And we made the playoffs and we lost in game seven to yeah. the team that went to the finals. I mean, that and, team had serious goal scoring problems, too. Yeah. And then the Capitals game comes in. They're losing whatever the hell it was. Ray Emery, Wayne Simmons, they had enough, and yeah. they showed their frustration. Yep. And I mean, Vinny Cavalier. Oh my God, not, yeah, uh, Shanner. Shanner. Yep. I mean, I mean, let's. I don't know if that happens if Ray doesn't skate the length. <laughs> I'll never forget. Yeah. I know we've talked about this, but when when Razor when I got back in the locker room after it, I, I kind of chuckled because I said. From Slapshot, what'd you say to him, Reg? Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, and, and Ray's just died. And he goes, did you like that? I'm like, I think 20,000 people oh my God, <laughs> loved it. Yeah. Poor Hopi. But I said, what, seriously, though, would you? He goes, he goes, I got to him, and I said, let's fucking go. And he said, no way. He goes, yeah. well, protect yourself because I'm we're going. You know, and then. You know, I mean, they let out their frustration that night. We and went then, on a run after that. Yeah, G scored that goal against Edmonton, and then he went on. He got Hart yeah. nomination. Yeah. Yeah. And they made the playoffs. I mean. It can yeah. happen. Oh, it can happen. And, you know, going back to that season, I was uh, still coaching with the Phantoms at the time. But I, I remember that training camp like it was almost yesterday because I don't know if you remember. It was like, you know, it's always that battle of how hard you push these guys in training camp and, and this prevention of injury type of thing. Because, you know what I mean? Training camp is tough. It's grueling. And, and But a lot of times you get a lot of injuries coming out. So there was this, yeah. there was this balance yeah. of doing less work. Less skating. I don't know if you remember that now. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Less yeah. skating and, and training camp. Yeah, I remember. Um, um, less, less, like everything. It was all about in, in the name of pre- prevention of injury. Right. Which seems wise, um, but if you're not putting enough work in, then when the season starts, you're, you're behind. I think they dropped all but maybe one game in the preseason that year. Yeah. And then you get into the regular season. Well, they were, they're, they're out of shape. They weren't skating. I, I right. think the Chiefs spent like the first month there yeah. just skating. Like, you know, it seems fundamental, but it's like you got to get these guys working yeah. at, at that pace that needs to be played at. So um, that's the philosophy, right? This is like, okay, well, you, there's always this fine line of work versus recovery, but if you're going to play on the side of recovery and, and prevention of injury, you're not going to put the work in. You're going to be you're going to be behind. But you know, obviously, Chief's a worker. He's a he's a, he's a smart guy. Understands the recovery component, but you can't outsource the work. Yeah, you know what I mean. And, and, and just and, and live in this bubble. So uh, I'm, I know Yo, Yo is, uh, is is interim. Maybe maybe he's full term. Who who know who knows how this thing plays out? But whoever's going to come in and run this ship. Is is going to get these guys to work, mm-hmm. yeah. and, and and work not just as individuals, like as a team, like a collective unit, which it, is especially if it's one of the two that we yeah, we, of course. we threw out there, and there could be other. Who knows? Yeah, you know, maybe they're talking to someone else. Who yeah. knows? But uh, well, Bruce Boudreaux probably could have been a top of that list too mm-hmm. um, until yesterday, obviously. But um, there was you know a few. Good, there's a few good candidates. Winnie out the Pooh. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> I like that. I love him. <laughs> it's funny, but. Uh, we'll see, I guess, tonight, right? I mean, it's yeah. uh, game one of a, of, a, of a new era. Behind the bench. Yeah, G, Behind G, the bench. Said, G said post-game last night, and this was before AV fi- was fired, he said, expect us to answer tomorrow. Yeah. So yeah. I'm I'm looking forward to see what they come out yeah. with. 
when you, when you when you drop that many games in a row, it's like it's like the odds are working in your favor. You're going to sneak out a win now and then, yeah, right? I mean, it's like to, it's sure. like if mean, it's like game nine or ten, it's like they're they're bound to win a game, right? I mean, it's like how many games can you lose in a row, really? Um, but the timing of this is is very much needed, obviously. Whether it's the, the firing itself or the belief of the captain that's going to actually um, you know trickle into the rest of the players and actually believe they're going to win. I mean, yeah, like even, I believe they're going to win. Even going back to last year, it just kind of looked like everybody quit on each other. Yeah, coaching staff, players, it just it had to be done. Yeah, I agree. Fresh fresh start behind the bench hopefully yeah and, up. and, and <clears throat> like we said you know it's not out of reach that's no, the one good thing try to find a positive here you hate to see people lose their job yeah. <clears throat> but uh there's a lot of games left you know it's not like you, you got to make up for these eight losses you know you got to get a few in a row it can't be like here you know 500 how, how many points are they out seven, seven out of a out of yeah. the uh, and there's a lot of division games left. I mean, it's yeah. only December. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's exactly. time. definitely there's time. Definitely time. Definitely yeah. time. But this is the this time a you big have to week. Make the, this yep. is a big week. So, and we got some teams coming in that you should beat. Yeah. yeah. Um, and hopefully they find a way to. Yeah, you guys are going to the desert, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Woohoo! Looking Can't forward wait. to that one, Nas. No, me too, man. Can't wait. Oof. Get on the road and see these guys. Yep. Hopefully, uh, string together a couple couple wins. Yeah. So looking forward to that. Yeah, I know too. you'll be uh, you'll be in bed by ten thirty every night. Oh, that would be you tucked in. That would be you. Okay. <laughs> right on. Well, that's a wrap. That's a wrap, boys. Ot, check us out OT. next week. Yep. Thanks to Baller, my boy Debo behind the scenes over here. Thank you guys. See you next week on Ot. Thanks for watching, Knuckleheads. <laughs>